Welcome to Engineering Scale Models. I'm Jason, your host, and I do models. We're taking another look at part of our electronic series, adding some electronic circuitry to your scale models, you know, working on the project of the traffic lights. And I just wanted to go over a concept with you guys of logic gates. Now, most uh, computer systems use the concept of logic gates. Let me just get over here. Here we go, we're there. So I'm gonna move this up, logic gates. Now, what is a logic gate? A logic gate uses two inputs, or one or two inputs, or more. So you have your inputs, inputs, and then you have over here, you have outputs. Now, inputs can either be a zero or a one. A zero is low, a one is high. Now, depending on what the output is, is going to determine the kind of gate you need. So, we're going to start out in the beginning pretty simple with what's called a NOT gate. NOT gate. And that basically means if you have a low input, you have a high output and if you have a high input you have a low output so and I will draw you the symbol for a NOT gate right here you have your input you have a triangle and then you have a circle on there to show that it's inverted so it's basically a buffer with the little inverted signal on it and then you had you know this will be your I input and this would be your output now later on we'll be looking at you know or gates and gates and all that stuff but today I want to talk about the not gate so let's move this out of the way here if I can move it out of the way okay so we have our not gate and in order to build a NOT gate, we need to talk about transistors. So I'm going to switch to this momentarily. And this right here, this component right here, this right here is a transistor. It is a uh, BJN transistor. It's an NPN transistor. We'll go back to this. And it has three leads on it, so it's got It's got three leads. It's got a collector, a base, and an emitter. And the schematic symbol for this is this, 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 and then this. And then we put a circle around it. Sorry for my bad handwriting. I'm still looking at, still drawing stuff on, we're working on drawing stuff on the screen. So a NOT gate, how does a transistor help us with a NOT gate? Well, if we have a input here, input here, and we have ground down here, so this goes to ground, and then we have a resistor, resistor here, and we have plus 5 volts here and then off of this point here if we come to an LED and this will go to ground to ground it's an LED Another LED symbol so when the button is pushed when this button is pushed there's a button here you know button and the button is tied to 5 volts and through the button is a resistor tied to ground tied to ground and this is a 10k ohm resistor and this is a 220 ohm resistor. Your resistor values will vary depending on the circuitry you're building, but this is to work with an LED. So we have two inputs of 5 volts. 
<coughs> three instances of ground and then we have our LED so how this is going to work is if the button is not pushed so if the button is in the open position like it is shown in the picture there can be no there's no connection to this five volts here in this ground so the base of the transistor is not forward biased and current cannot flow so therefore current cannot flow through this resistor to ground so therefore the only way for this five volts to get to ground is through this resistor and then through this LED and then to ground but once you press the switch you apply a small voltage to the base which allows current to flow through this resistor through the transistor and then to ground and not leaving any voltage to travel through the LED so this acts almost like a switch it acts almost exactly like a switch there is a voltage drop over it but basically by turning on the base with a voltage you create a complete circuit to ground so that is how the NOT gate works so the truth table for a NOT gate is input output you have a one it's a zero you have a zero it's a one so that's the truth table for a um, NOT gate and these these can be very useful you can combine different gates together to make different circuits so let's take a look at how I did this circuit here uh, that's one by one I want this one no I don't want that one this one I want uh, we'll just go with this one guys so this is um, Tinkercad um, it's a free software download by AutoCAD. It's pretty good for designing circuits. You can use it for Arduino and things like that. And here I have a power supply that is 5 volts. I set it for half an amp just, just to set it. It didn't really matter. I have my switch here, 5 volts to one side, and then I have a pull down resistor of 10 kilo ohms. And then I have my NPN transistor here I have my collector my base and emitter the switch goes to the base so it will get uh, current and then when the button is or when it does not receive current but when the button is pressed it'll receive current which will turn off the LED and currently the power goes from through this resistor this 220 ohm resistor into the collector but it doesn't go in the collector because the collector is not turned on it goes across this jumper wire to the anode of the LED through the LED and then back to ground so right now currently with the circuit not not doing anything right now you have a complete circuit through the LED so if I turn this on the LED should light up so and then over here I have the emitter connected to ground so when the button is pressed the LED will turn off which is normally not how you do it but you know we're going to turn the LED off when we push the button and if we start the simulation you see how the LED is lit up and we press the button and the LED goes off and you can see that there is a 846 milliwatt millivolts only being drawn from the power supply right now because we are almost creating a dead short to the um, ground so and we're only doing 13 milliamps through the LED so now let's see this in actual practice here let's go to our overhead view and we'll check out some things here um, actually I'm gonna go to the overhead and this view so I can show you my show you my meter I know it's not the best let's see if I can stand my meter up we'll try that and see if that works out better so on my meter I have some probing leads here 
and we're going to take a look at the circuit first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my bench power supply just like I was using in the simulation and I'm going to put 5 volts on it I've already preset it up it's actually 0.495 and I'm not drawing very much amperage so now if I come in here and I press the button the LED will go off so it's a not gate so it's not pressed so the LED is on the LED is pressed so the LED is off and we can see how this works in the circuit here so if I turn my meter to DC voltage and we can come in here and we can probe this here if I come to the two sides of the LED I come to the two sides to the LED the LED is dropping 2.8 volts if I come to the two sides of the resistor it's dropping 2.6 volts that gives us our 5 volts so that's working fine but if I put this back on the LED you see how the LED is dropping the voltage so it's lit when I press the button well that's because I'm I'm grounding it out so I just need to go across the LED so when I press the button I'm shorting out the circuit and I'm getting all 5 volts because of the transistor now if I come to the emitter of the transistor over here I'm getting 5 volts that's because I'm across it so if I come to here and I plug this in to the collector side which is right here you sure that's right so the voltage across the emitter and collector is 2 volts if I press it goes to 76 millivolts so that is the voltage drop across the transistor when it is activated so let's check the base and emitter so the button is not pressed and there's zero voltage between the base and emitter but when I press the button there's five volts between the base and emitter so the circuit turned on so as you can see as pressing the button it adds voltage to the base and then it is dumped to the through the emitter to ground and I have the full voltage leaving nothing through the LED so the transistor is dropping all the voltage leaving nothing for the LED and then when I undo it there's nothing there's there's no it's not even leakage voltage through the base in a in emitter so the LED has the voltage it needs so that is how that works and I used a, um, like I said, a 10K pull down resistor. And then we have a simple NOT gate. So that's pretty cool. Um, next, we're going to look at a different gate. And I'm going to get that set up. And we're going to take a look at it. I'll be back. Okay, we are back, <coughs> excuse me, with the next logic gate. And it is the AND gate. And the AND gate is basically. Um, let's do the truth table first we have input A and input B and then we have our output here so let's draw this here so if A is a 1 and B is a 0 they both have to be pressed for it to be true so they have to be A and B so that's going to be low and then if A is 0 and B is 1 it's still going to be a 0 both are 0 it's going to be a zero and if both are one it's going to be a one because it's an AND gate and you draw an AND gate like this and there's your output right there so you have your A B and then you have your output and an AND gate you can make with transistors, and I'll show you the circuit in a minute. But you're basically going to have two input, two in push button inputs or switch inputs, and then you're going to have two transistors, and they're going to be routed in a way to get you 
the signal you need and I actually have a better version than I did with the last one because I figured this out if I swap over here to this one there we go so there is the AND gate now here is the AND gate with the actual AND gate symbol here and as you can see if I press this switch right here the light doesn't come on but if I press this one it comes on and if I take this one off it comes off so you can also do this with transistors so here I have your NPN transistor you have your collector emitter and base and then I have another transistor your collector emitter and base I have the first transistor so this right here is my A input and it is connected to this transistor and then the emitter of this transistor is connected to my B input and then this connected to this and then it goes through a 220 ohm resistor through an LED back to ground and this is just a 5 volt input and it, the 5 volts is connected to this switch this transistor and this collector and then this collector so as you can see if I close this switch it completes the first the first circuit here but if I undo that switch and I close this switch again the current does not flow because there is no um, there is no current flowing through this transistor it's not forward biased into this switch but if I close this switch as you can see current flows in my LED lights up so you can see here as current now flows through this transistor here because I turned it on but like I said if I turn this off this transistor is off so it can't get its voltage and if I turn this one off this transistor can't turn on so therefore the LED light will not turn on so that is the schematical version of it and if I come here like this and like this I have it built in a circuit with my transistors here so I'll have you take a look at that while I get this set up here because I didn't do it oh more of a mess here than I thought okay so okay so there's the circuit over here and if I press this button oops oh, start simulation if I press this button nothing happens and I press this button nothing happens if I hold shift and then I press both buttons the lights on I let go of one the light goes off and as you can see I have my voltage coming into the switch and then I have a pull down resistor 10k and then I have it going from the switch to the base 5 volts coming into the collector then from that emitter it goes to the switch that is pulled down to ground with a pull down resistor and then that switch goes to this base this collector connects to 5 volts and this emitter finally connects to the anode of the resistor and then from the cathode to a, through a resistor to ground and then that is how the circuit works and then I have a cool built version of it right here and as you can see if I press this I need to hook up power first that would help so it's my first video in the morning I'm a little off all right so we got our five volts coming in here um, if you look our inverter circuits working this is what we built a minute ago now we have our and circuit so nothing nothing but both of them light the circuit so nothing nothing so there we go that is that is an AND gate. That's how an AND gate works. And um, next we're going to take a look at a different gate. I'm going to get that all set up. 
Okay, now we're going to be talking about an OR gate. Now, what is an OR gate? Let's start with the truth table. We have input A, input B, and then we have an output. We have our truth table. So if A is high, which is a 1, and B is low, since it's an OR gate, either OR, it's going to be a high output. Output is A, and B is 1, it's going to be a 1. And if output is 1, 1, it's going to be a 1. But if it's 0, 0, it's going to be a 0. So it'll be on whether either one is pressed, either one is pressed, or both of them are pressed, it's going to be on. And an OR gate is... this symbol right there. Sorry for my poor drawing skills. A, B, and this is your output. So no matter what is put on A or B, it's going to show on the output, whether it's both. We'll get into more different gates that change that, but this is the basics of an OR gate. These are your simple gates. Um, just to go over the simple ones, then we'll get a little bit more complicated. Now let's take a look at the circuitry on this. So again, we're using NPN transistors. And then first we'll take a look at first we'll take a look at this right here. This is your OR gate. This is what it looks like. This is iCircuits, by the way. It's a Windows program. You can also get it on Apple products. I like it because it shows the circuit working. It's got a lot of good components in it. doesn't have all the components I like. That's why I like other softwares like Tinkercad. But as you can see, if I turn this one on, it lights up. If I turn this one on, the LED lights up. If I turn them both on, the LED still lights up. So this is an OR gate. So if either OR of these are on, it's on. And if both are on, it's on. Now you can do that with transistors. And that's what I have here. I have a 5 volt rail up here. 5 volt goes to each collector of the of the transistor. 5 volts each goes to the switches. The pull down resistors aren't in the circuit, but we'll see that in a minute. And if I turn on this one, it activates this transistor. It this base activates it for biases the transistor and then current can flow through here through the resistor and light the LED. Now if I come over to the B input, the same thing happens here. It can go through the collector to the emitter and then it can make connection to the circuit. And then if I do both of them, it goes through both, meets up in the middle, current stays the same through the whole circuit. So that is how that's going to work. And then you can see the voltage drop if you look at this, this has a voltage drop um, actually it's not telling me the voltage drop the voltage on the base to emitter is 6.36 millivolts so it's dropping six six 636 millivolts through the base to the emitter and then if we look at the resistors taking two and a half volts and the LED is taking uh, 1.8 volts at 11.5 milliamps so you know a program like this is very good on getting your components specced in to make sure everything is is good to go now we can come in here and we can change the different forward voltages of the LED over here and we can also change the resistance value and then the drop will change so that is an OR gate in circuit form now we'll look at the OR gate in our Tinkercad as you can see I have my power supply powering these rails I'm also powering the negative rail up here I have my LED it's going to ground and then I have power coming to each switch. Each switch has power coming in. Each switch is has a pull down resistor of 10K. And then off of each switch, I'm going to the base of the two different transistors. And then also in each transistor, the collector is also getting the voltage, which is five volts. 
and then from the emitter of the one over here of the B is going to the LED and the emitter of A is going to the LED so if I start the simulation and I press it I get a light if I press it I get a light I know I'm showing you this work in different ways but this gives you a different aspect of how it looks so and then if I turn both of them on it still stays on and I can take one off and the other off so that is that now let's look at it in actual real life because I have it already built here let's look up my power and this will all make sense um, in programming I'm teaching these logic gates because you use a form of logic in programming and I think by looking at how these logic gates work when you see the command of or and not and and things like that you're gonna understand what it's doing so turn on the power and as you can see I can press one button or the other button or I could press both of them there we go and if we look at our if we look at our truth table if A is 1 it's output 1 if B is 1 it's output 1 if they're both 1 its output is on and if they're both off the output is 0 so that is an OR gate and you see I just have my little transistors there I got all the circuits so far I'm going to do an overview at the end so that is the OR gate now we're going to look at um, some, some some more complicated stuff and I will get those gates set up okay now we're going to take a look at a NAND gate and a NAND gate is basically a not and gate so it's an and gate that is the opposite of that and gate so if we have our truth table here we have our a input our b input and our output and if we have a zero and a zero well it's going to be a one it's going to output a one because it's it's the opposite of what it is so if it's a one or zero well that has to be both of them so that is also going to be a one and if it's zero one it has to be both of them to change the signal so it's going to be a one and then if they're both they're both a one they're both a one it's going to be a zero so this circuit is going to put out a high unless both gates both inputs are are low are high so unless you bring both inputs high you're going to get a high output and a NAND gate looks like this you have your inputs here so it look you draw your regular NAND, your regular AND gate you put a little circle on it show that it's a basically an inverted inverted AND gate that's what the circle means it's normally putting out an inverse signal you have your A and your B and you have your output so if this is this is 1 and 1 you're gonna get 0 0 on the output if this is 0 1 you're going to get a 1 on the output. If this is 1, 0, you're going to get a 1. And this is 0, 0, you're going to get a 1. So that's how a NAND gate truth table works. And again, you can build this with discrete transistors. And we'll look at that circuit now. Pattern going here. Here's our NAND gate. And we have over here we have our just this is a, what our NAND gate looks like and as you can see it currently has power you know we're getting a voltage drop in about 14 milliamps of current going through our resistor to ground and if I do one switch nothing happens if I do the opposite switch nothing happens 
If I do both switches, the light turns off. So there's power going to both of these, so therefore it's the opposite of this, so the power goes off. And then if I just open one, the power is restored. So that can be very useful in circuitry. And also when programming, it's good to know that you can get the inverse of something of two different inputs. And now as for uh, transistors, here's your two transistors. They're hooked up similarly to the AND gate where one transistor's emitter feeds into the switch and the base of the other one. I put a resistor here because I was getting issues um, when, it was, when it was dumping the ground because there's no other resistors in the circuit. I, I, don't need, I didn't need this on the actual build because the switches will have pull down resistors. So currently um, the LED is lit and if we close one nothing happens because it's not this one's being forward biased but it's not being forward biased with any current if we turn this one on this one is being forward biased and it's trying to forward bias this one but it can't because the switch is off but if we click this switch it's forward biased and it is going directly to ground and therefore it takes the path of least resistance and see this is technically only 20 ohms to ground um, this is less resistant so the LED um, is not going to light. Um, it's a little weird in the circuit because of how I had to draw it schematic wise but in the um, actual component build it, it works a little bit better so let's take a look at that. So this is the NAND gate so again I have my pull down resistors I have my LED here sorry about that guys LED here and let's see here let's start simulation the LED is on and if I press both of them it goes off so if I let one go it comes back on if I press both of them it goes off so that is how that NAND gate works. Now I'm going to show you the circuit on the board. I just got to get it set up. Okay, right here we have our NAND gate built. Um, if I put the light on to make it brighter, it's you're not going to be able to see the LED too well. So I'm going to turn on my 5 volts. The light's going to light up. If I press 1, nothing happens. If I press 2, nothing happens. I press them both the light goes off <clears throat> so that is how a NAND gate works so then now that is for um, three four basic gates you have let's just review here you have your inverter gate here let me just get some wires here and hook those up here negative Negative, positive, positive. Okay, so you have your inverter. If it's off, it's on. If it's on, it's off. So that's your basic inverter. And then over here is your AND gate. So nothing happens. Press them both. They both come on. That's your AND gate. So both of them, one, the other, nothing happens. Both off, off. Okay. And then we have up here our OR gate, where either OR, and then we have our NAND gate. So both of them have to be pressed to turn it off, otherwise it's on. And um, next we're going to look at a NOR gate, which is very much like the AND gate, the NAND gate, but uh, one of the the light will be on and one of the buttons will turn them off. So we'll look at um, a NOR gate, and then that is going to be the basic gates. There's some exclusive gates. But I'll just show you those in logic form because they become pretty difficult to build, build with transistors. So I'm going to get the uh, NOR gate. We'll talk about that, and then I'll just briefly go over the other ones in the circuit simulator. 
Okay, guys, now we're looking at a NOR gate. Now, what is a NOR gate? A NOR gate is it will stay on until you press the button and it will turn off. If you press both buttons, it will turn off. So, if you have your truth table of A and B and your output, so if one is high, if let's do zero first if both zeros your outputs gonna be a one if you have a one zero your outputs gonna be a zero if you have a zero one your outputs gonna be a zero if you have a zero or a one a one and a one your outputs gonna be a zero so it's the opposite of a NOR gate basically so either or both will give you your output but it will be the inverse of the output and to draw that in logic gate form has a little circle on it so there's your output there's your A B so that is your NOR gate in your truth table let's take a look at the circuit here is what the circuit looks like. So here is the NOR gate drawn. So if I turn on one, it turns off. Turn on the other one, it turns off. I turn on both, turns off. And then the same principle here. If I turn on one of these, it turns the LED off. If I turn on the other one, it turns off the circuit. So that is basically you've got two transistors. When this one is forward biased, the current flows into this transistor, which drops the current, which is the shortest path of least resistance. So the least resistive path is here. And then the same with this one. If you forward bias this one, it's the least the path of least resistance. Um, this is your basic OR gate. And then I added an inverter here um, just for ease of doing it. You could probably do it a different way with just these two transistors, but this is the way I did it with three transistors just for the ease of it. So if you look here, I have my circuit, I have my three transistors, I have everything hooked up. If I start the simulation, if I press this one, it goes off. If I press this one, it goes off. If I press both of them, stays off and then I can release them and it stays on so that is your NOR gate let's look at it in the real world there it is right here let's plug in our power again the light is dim for the fact to see the LEDs so we have it plugged in here the light is on we press one the light goes off press the other one the light goes off we press them both the light goes off so let us review because this is all the ones I'm going to build on this circuit board. We have our inverter, inverter, we have our AND gate, so both of these have to be pressed. We have our OR gate, we have our NAND gate, so both of them have to be pressed, and then we have our NOR gate where either one could be pressed. Now there's one more gate I want to look at here on this so I can show you one more gate here that is an XOR gate. Let me just pull up the file here and let me go to the XOR gate and this is an exclusive this is an exclusive OR gate so if either of these is closed it runs the circuit but if both are closed it does not run the circuit I didn't build this in transistors because this is a little more complicated a little bit out of my skill range but if only one is pressed it turns on if both are pressed it's off and if both are off it is um, turned off let us look at that
I can get over here to my to my screen here let's go to this let's get this out of the way and if we look at our X or gate our truth table is a B and our output so an exclusive XOR gate is if they're both off, it's off. If A and A is on and B is off, it's on. If A is off and B is on, it's on. But if they're both on, it's off. So that is our truth table for the XOR gate is exclusively either or. So that'll come up in programming. It's also good in in building with electronics and stuff to understand how these gates work and how transistors work and all that good stuff uh, thank you guys for sitting through this logic video I did it to put the information out there I also did it as a reference video for me if I need to come back to how gates work and whatnot I can skim through my own video so I appreciate you guys watching you can visit me on these social media links the links are in the description below you can also visit my Patreon page and check me out there and support the channel. I just want to again thank you guys so much if you made it to the end. I greatly appreciate it. I hope this video was informative.